Ladies and gentlemen, since Andrew Carnegie's day and his search for peace, the, the world has changed, changed fundamentally. Global markets have opened to countries large and small. Threats to international security don't come by and large from territorial acquisition. They come from international terrorism or international criminality. In this environment, the disadvantages of smaller nations have disappeared. They're now benefiting from the natural economic strength, which is flexibility, speed of decision-making, the ability to define clear national interests and objectives. Of the United Nations Human Development Index, 11 of the top 20 nations have fewer than 10 million inhabitants. Norway, with just under 5 million people, is number one. The UK is number 26. The United States, incidentally, is third. Uh, so large nations can also prosper. <laughs> However, the USA, importantly, has a far less centralized system of government than the United Kingdom does. But you can see in the advance of smaller countries in many other ways. When the United Nations was founded itself, it had 51 member countries. Now there are almost 200. As recently as 1990, Europe had 35 countries. Now it has 50. Of the 27 countries that currently make up the European Union, six of them did not exist as independent states before 1990. In that context, and looked in that way, Scotland's current constitutional status seems more and more like an anachronism. An independence which carries the right to participate as an equal on the international stage appears more and more like Scotland's natural state of being. Independence inevitably in the modern world goes hand in hand with interdependence. Our nationalism, as this Scotland Week demonstrates, goes hand in hand with internationalism. Scotland will share a currency with the remaining members of the United Kingdom. We will be a member of both the United Nations and the European Union. We will participate as an active member of the international community. And of course, we will remain close friends of nations such as the United States of America, with which we share just a, such a long-standing ties of trade, of family, of friendship, ties which are epitomized by the life and the legacy of Andrew Carnegie. For all of these reasons, I believe that come September next year, Scotland will choose to be an independent nation. To quote Scotland's national bard, Robert Burns, in a song praised by Andrew Carnegie as the hymn of triumphant democracy, for all that and all that, it's coming yet for all that. Or in the words of Thomas Jefferson, your own tribune of triumphant democracy, we are a people capable of self-government and worthy of it. Mm -hmm.